this is my sixth winter riding. Um, but at minus 40, I start to worry about the kids. I can dress myself and get really warm, but I don't like to have the kids out below minus, t about minus 30. Like my littlest guy is just about two. Um, so we've been staying pretty close to home. Although yesterday we had uh, an event that my oldest had been looking forward to for quite a while. So part of being car free means we have the flexibility to um, rent a car if we need to. So we grabbed a common auto and took him to his event, came home. And um, normally we would have biked it, but at minus 40, I'm not going to do that. No. That's the first time this year, but not meaning January, but the first time this winter that that's needed to happen. Wow. So you guys, let's let's rewind the clock, like, you know, rewind the calendar, let's say 18 months or so, I guess about 20 months ago now, uh, you decide as a family to go entirely car free, like you didn't go from three to two or two to one, you went from one or two to zero. Is that right? Yeah, well, we started, we went from two to one in 2018. So we bought our first cargo bike in 2018. Uh, we had moved from a small town in southern Alberta to Edmonton, and I knew that I hated driving in city traffic. So I wanted to be able to walk to work. Um, and But we wanted a way to get our kids around that didn't require us all having to pile into a car. So we bought a cargo bike. It was actually a trike style. So the kids sit in a box in front of us on the bike. Um, we bought that in 2018. We sold our first car to do that. Um, and then we had talked about going car free for quite a while. Um, but then we had our littlest guy just shy of two years ago. And I sort of put the car free on hold because we had a baby and you can't possibly not have a car with a baby, right? That that just didn't make sense. Um, but I was about three months into mat leave um, home with the kids and just going, we're not using this minivan. So I don't know why we're making payments on it. I don't know why it's just sitting in the driveway. Um, and that's when we decided, yeah, let's let's try this. Let's see. It's going to be an experiment. Um, we it might be a huge mistake, but uh, let's give it a try. I think some one of the, one of the more I mean, there's a ton of interesting elements about your story. Um, one of them is is the fact that you guys, you know, you're a family of six. You got four kids, and you're living in the suburbs. I think some people might, you know, they look to people living a car free lifestyle in Vancouver or downtown Toronto or in a city with particularly robust or impressive transit networks, public transit networks. And uh, with all due respect to Edmonton, that's not the case. Um, so it adds some challenges for sure, right, to, to, to your everyday operation. It does. And that's why I think when people talk about going car light or car free, um, the electric cargo bike is the key piece to it mm. uh, because transit isn't perfect. Um, we didn't take transit yesterday for a reason. Um, Sunday schedules are terrible. Um, but we do ride our cargo bikes because they can get us anywhere that we need them to. Um, the bike that you're showing on the screen right now, I've got a range of about 100 kilometers with the batteries on it. So it doesn't do the work for me. I'm still pedaling. I'm still riding that bike. Um, but it does make it so that I don't feel the weight of all the kids in the bike with me. So you told us that over the past 18 months, uh, your family has put almost 10,000 kilometers on two bikes that's no joke i mean that that's like no and we're actually we're over ten thousand now are since, you since i wrote that email um yeah no we put significant mileage on the bikes it's not that different than what we would do if we were driving everywhere the kids still have extracurriculars they still go to school they still have you know fr visits at friends we still go and do go to museums go to libraries go and do all the things that every other family does we just do it with the bike Mm -hmm. So you've got the affordability angle on this. You've, you've got obviously sort of the, the, your your conscience when it comes to climate individual <laughs> action on climate change. Your conscience probably feels pretty healthy at this point. Yeah, I I mean, when I look at all of the things you can do to make to be more sustainable, one of them is to cut your transportation emissions. Another one is to go you know, vegetarian or vegan, and I like steak. I'm sorry, I, I, I'm not making that change. Um, you know, they also say having one less kid. Well, I have four, so I'm I'm not going to go there. But um, we can do our piece with uh, getting around. And honestly, Ryan, it, I mean, the affordability is fantastic. We have saved so much money; like it's tens of thousands of dollars. Um, and the climate change is great, but it's really been a life enhancing experience for us. I get energized by being out and riding and people will say I'm crazy but if you're familiar with the idea of a runner's high when you go out and run you can get that endorphin rush well when I'm out biking you get that same endorphin rush and at 
you know, minus 35, that endorphin rush comes much faster. So there's an enjoyability aspect to it. There's the fun that I get to have with my kids. They're not sitting behind me in the car. I can see them. I can talk to them. I get to watch them see things, you know, um, Johnny was just talking about the rabbits that you can see. My <clears throat> little guy points out every single rabbit we see all the time. So, so your kids are down with the idea. They, they don't, they don't feel like their family is doing something that's absolutely bonkers and none of their friends have to do this, but our family has to do this. They're actually pretty keen about it. Um, yeah, for the most part, my, my daughter absolutely loves it. She's, you talk to her and sometimes I get a little bit nervous about how <laughs> pro bike and anti car she gets. Um, but uh, yeah, my kids are on board. They love it. My son, you say, okay, it's time to go for the bike. And my little guy, and he's just like, bike, 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 bike. So he loves getting out and into the bike. Um, you know, we have them ride on their own where we can. But the way my philosophy is, is the cargo bikes are car replacements for us. So if it's a journey we would normally do by car, then the kids get to ride in the bike. If it's something that would just be a fun bike ride, even if we had a car, then they ride their own bikes. Do you think, I mean, like what you've done here is really impressive. Uh, do you think that it would work for the average person? Like, do, like, do you, could, have, you have you had friends of yours um, in, in, in a sincere way ask questions uh, that gives you the idea that maybe they're inching toward their own transition? Can you, can you see more people in your circle observing what you're doing, seeing that it's possible and making the same move themselves? I mean, even just the affordability angle is huge. I see more and more people moving, not necessarily to going car free, because I recognize Edmonton is um, a very car centric city. Um, but a lot of people that I know are moving to the idea of going to one car or of trying to just use their car less. So, you know, we know statistically that the vast majority of trips by car are less than 10 kilometers. Um, and so people are like, well, what can, what could I shift? So I've there's a group um, I've co-founded with um, a few other uh, parents who bike called Let's Bike There, Y-E-G. And we are all parents who have a cargo bike and we use our cargo bikes as much as we possibly can to get around the city. And then we meet up because it, these cargo bikes aren't everywhere. They're not necessarily easy to find. So we meet up once a month at a playground and parents who are curious or interested um, can come by and they can test out the bikes. They can see what they look like. They can see see how that goes. So there's definitely a shift happening. We are seeing um, in North America that um, e-bikes are outselling EVs. So the shift to micro mobility is there. We just need to see um, more infrastructure. Yeah. What's what's the most common question that people ask you when they when they see out about? We just showed people people can uh, follow you. You're you're on Twitter. You're on TikTok. We'll link to it in the show notes here for YouTube and the podcast uh, at Mommy Pedals. Uh, and you release these great videos. I love the one of you bringing home your Christmas tree on the back of your bike. It's obviously something you go to Costco on your bike. I mean, you've shown you you show photos of how you can fit an entire shopping cart of groceries for a family of six into your trailer, no problem. Um, so you're you're sort of almost like to use sales terminology, you're, you're answering objections uh, with these videos, but what, what's one of the most common questions that you have that you receive? Um, the most common question I get is actually, where do you get that bike? Uh, because they are uncommon. You don't see a ton of them, but you're right. I do answer objections because I do hear from people. A lot of them are like, Oh wow, I, I couldn't do that. And what I want people to know is that it seems absolutely wild. I recognize that. Um, I thought it was absolutely wild before we started doing it, uh, but it's not as difficult as it seems. And one of one of the key things that people, I think, miss is we look at bikes quite often as a toy. They're they're a form of recreation, but they can be a serious form of transportation. And in some cases, um, I'm actually faster than a car. Uh, especially if I'm heading to the downtown area or to the White Ave area or anywhere where you have to find parking because my parking tends to be directly in front of wherever I'm going. Right. Yeah. But you, uh, these, these bikes aren't cheap, right? I, I mean, I, I would imagine if I'm you, I'm spending $500 on a lock. Uh, for the, can I ask what, 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 the, what the cost is, what the price is for both your bikes? Yeah. So no, they're not cheap. And the way we have financed both of our bikes is by getting rid of a car. So our right. trike that we bought in 2018, to buy it new today with the accessories we have on it. So 
the cover to keep the rain and the snow out, um, that sort of thing, is $6,500. Um, and the other bike that we have to buy it with all the accessories that we have on it is um, about $14,000. So they're not cheap bikes. 14000 They are. 14000 for a bike? For, yeah, 14000 for the bike plus the, the bike itself is 9000 Okay. Um, but I added a second battery to it and the batteries run about $600 a piece. Right. Um, I added that extra front bench that they're showing in the video so that I could sit more kids in it. Um, that video you're showing right now doesn't show the rain and snow cover, but that's on it. So there's a bunch of accessories that go with it the same way that you would accessorize your vehicle when you get the heated seats or the heated steering wheel. Yeah. I mean, like 14,000 blows my mind is a price for a bike, but it's also like if you're buying a, a vehicle for a family, 14,000 doesn't get you anything. Um, you're not paying it. You're not inputting anything for fuel costs. I mean, do you insure? I guess you would insure it or you'd have like property insurance on it, but but not the cost that you would incur on a, on a new car. Right. No, no. I insure all my bikes for about three hundred dollars a year. OK. Yeah. Not too bad at all. Wow. This is great. I mean, it's it's uh, you're, you're, you're practicing what you preach. I mean, you're, you're, you're showing people that it's possible. Um, I would imagine that you probably the detractors would have something to say about bike lanes and things like that anytime this is like our secret we used to say in talk radio back in the day uh if a guest ever fell through or we found ourselves with a half hour to fill just bring up bike lanes or fluoride in the water and you'll get like a 300 phone calls and you'll be totally fine um do you feel like with, with the the expansion of bike lanes in edmonton or what you've seen in other cities um like do you feel safe out there with your kids do you feel safe sharing because i know you've made a, a point on your social media channels to point out you don't ride on the sidewalk you ride on the on this on the roads do, do you feel okay with it i do um i have been riding my bike for a very long time i mean i grew up uh, like i said in a rural area and so to get to my friends houses i had to bike there so i've been riding on the sides of highways since probably i was probably I was 13 before my parents started letting me ride on the side of the highway. But I've been riding on highways for a long time. So I'm familiar with riding with traffic, mixing with traffic. It is not for everybody. And that is where we need the protected infrastructure um, because I shouldn't have to worry about being hit by cars. And I have been hit by a car with my kids in the bike. Oh, twice. really? Um, yep. Always, both times, it was at an intersection. Um, I was on a... Um, shared use path, so the city's shared use path system, and the car decided to make a right turn. And in both cases, the driver looked me and looked at me. I saw them. I looked right in their eyes, and they pulled out and made the right right into the bike. So it was low speed collisions. There was never any damage to me or the kids that were in the bike with me. Um, but the bike have gotten a little beat up by it, and I've had a few things that I've had to be fixed as a result of it. So I'm. I'm not going to tell you that it's a hundred percent safe, but you have to be careful. But to be fair, it's not a hundred percent safe to drive either. Oh, I mean, for people sure. People get in fender benders all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 I mean, I don't know why I'm going here, but there was a tragic story the other day. I don't know if you heard about this. Somebody riding the bus. Did you hear about this? This lady mm -hmm. in her sixties riding the bus. The bus goes around a corner. She loses her footing on the bus, falls out the door, and is killed. I mean, it's just like to me. I just, I don't know. That that got me in a whole different mindset thinking about life and how fleeting it all is and, and how at any given moment uh, it can just be lights out. But, but to keep the conversation focused, uh, uh, bring it back to this. And, and, and just the fact that, I mean, I'm just so impressed with what you've done. I feel like I'm just, you're going to shake your head at me and roll your eyes. I'm just like, well, it's not for me. This isn't for me because we need a car. We need a car. And then you're probably going to go, well, why do you need it? And then probably the more that I try to talk and justify it, you're probably going to go, well, you can do this and this and this, right? I mean, like, you know, and, and even the fact that you pointed out that if you guys need to, you can you know, rent a vehicle or you can use a car share program. It's not like if, you know, if you're taking the family to, to you know, drum heller to go see the dinosaurs in the summer, what do you do? You just rent a vehicle? Is that the plan? Yep. That's, and we've done that whenever we do a family holiday or I've got family, you know, in other provinces, um, we just, we rent a car and we go out and we see them. Um it's not, it's, it, you say, I have to think about it. There's a little bit more logistical planning. It's of not course, like you just yeah. jump in your car off the driveway, but it's no different. I mean, you go and book a hotel, you go and book, you know, a campsite, you go and book whatever you're booking for your travel. So we just add one other booking to it and um, you don't notice, but I wouldn't actually, Ryan, try and point out, oh no, you could do this, this or this. What I would actually invite you or anyone else to do is just come ride one of them because I have never seen anyone ride one who gets off it and goes, 
oh, that was horrible. I'm never doing that again. Everybody is excited and has a blast. And the smiles and the giggles that you get from kids, especially younger kids, um, it, you just you want to do it. We so haven't even talked more, about. We haven't even talked about mental health. We haven't talked about the gulps of fresh, crisp air, the oxygen that you're infusing into your morning, which is obviously probably, I mean, uh, a significant benefit, like the physical fitness thing. We haven't even talked about like how many calories are burned in 10,000 kilometers of cycling, right? I'll acknowledge, I mean, a friend of mine bought an e-bike last summer and she let me hop on and take it for a spin. I couldn't believe how incredible it was. I mean, I think it was going like 40 kilometers an hour or something. It blew my mind actually. Um, but yeah, even the physical fitness of just getting out and pedaling. Mm-hmm. I, I, what I talked about with people sometimes are like, oh, this is going to take so much more time. Well, number one, it doesn't actually take as much time as you think. When you look at, I think Tom Tom has statistics on how fast the average car in the city of Edmonton moves at any one particular time. Yeah. And so the average speed over the course of a trip of a car is 30 kilometers an hour. And that's all told. That's including rush hour. That's including, you know, dead of night times. Mm-hmm. Um the bike, my bikes are limited. There's different classes of e-bikes. And so mine are the ones that are limited. So they're allowed to go on the shared use pass at 32 kilometers an hour. Um, so quite often I'm moving very similar to the speed of traffic. So it doesn't actually take that much longer to go places. And the extra time that it does take, I've got a video I did where I did trip training. So one of those days where you've got, you know, a doctor's appointment here and you've got another appointment over here, and then you need to stop at the library. I mean, the, the types of travel that we all do where you're like, okay, I got to do an errand day today. And I and that that trip took me was a total of 44 kilometers around the city. Um, and my biking time on it, the actual time riding the bike was about uh, an hour and 45. And when you look at what Google Maps told me it would take to drive all of those places, it was going to take me driving time, according to Google Maps, an hour and 24 minutes. So hmm. it took me a little bit longer, but I had fresh air. I had exercise. I didn't have to go to the gym that day for an extra, you know, 25 minutes of time.